right, I'm gonna call the Board of Selectmen's meeting to order. It is 6.05. And I'm gonna call the Finance Committee meeting at 6.04. So the only thing on the agenda tonight is the going over the including the warrant. So Article 1. Oh, can I make a comment, please, before you start? I'm sorry. I just want to put this on by right there. The only public discussing and it's very important because since our last meeting over the last couple of days, I've received many emails and phone calls regarding comments to me. So I think in the tough times we're in and what we're going through as far as trying to show Gary, the importance. Gary, I'm going to cut you off. Those those insensitive comments were made by me. I was going to make an apology this evening and again on Tuesday. They were very insensitive. I should not have made them. I'm passionate about the town and I said things that were incorrect and insensitive. I am very sorry. I didn't mean them. I'm just very passionate at times. So I've already spoken to Scott. I wrote to Lynn, I, but I told them that I would be doing it tonight as well as Tuesday. And so, I mean, we there's were, no reason to bring it up. I was going to take just, care of it myself. Okay. But I just felt I needed addressing, Karen, that's all. Um, okay. You have my phone number, Gary. If you had a problem, instead of addressing it that way, you should have called right, me. And this, this really isn't the appropriate time. We were all there, so I guess the appropriate time, we all heard the comments. We could have made comments ourselves. Right. And I did. I made right. inappropriate... And it was a generalization, and right. it's up for Karen to own. own and I do. This is not what the place... We're right. talking about the warrant tonight. We're not talking about... So comments that we can discuss that at a regular meeting. But. So we we'll start with the article one is just the accepting the annual report. So, um, we need to make, make a motion regardless of every article, right? So, yeah, motion to approve. Uh, I make a motion to approve article one to hear the annual reports of the town offices and committees. Leah, Leah can you hear us? It's, I was going to say, is Skin up there, so I need to be, yes. be you know, yeah. seconding or whatever? Yes. Okay, wait, wait one second. Okay, uh, roll call. Yeah, and I. Wait and I. And Nichols, I. Thank you. Article 2, to see if the town will vote to fix the salaries or compensation of elected town officers for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, in accordance with... Chapter 41, Section 108 of the General Laws as amended or taken any action in relation thereto. Moderator, $75. Select Board, $3,000. Town Clerk, $82,561.44. Board of Assessors, $1,500. Board of Health, $7,500. Planning Board, $2,500. Let me through the chair. That's up. Board of Health, $750, not $7,500. Did I say $7,500? <laughs> What's his they zero? wish. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me. Sorry. All right. So as corrected. To make it, do you need me to reread the whole thing or just no. say? No, you can just okay. make a motion to please. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve Article Two as read. Yes, can we? That's contingent on the two and a half override. If I may, I spoke to town council about this. She said we do not need the contingency language in this article because this isn't the one um, appropriating the funds. The funds are okay. appropriated in Article Three. Okay. So it won't make a difference that if the two and a half doesn't, we're going to cut some of these. That's not a problem. Correct. Yeah, okay. we specifically, because I, I... Ted really, asked me to bring it up tonight, so I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, in fact, I actually <laughs> had the contingency language in there, and then when she reviewed it, she said it was not necessary in this particular article. Okay, sorry. So, so Leah, can you get a second on that? Yeah, wait a second. So thank you for the clarification, because that was my question. Also, the way I, I read it was it was setting the salary, setting the salaries, not funding them, but I wasn't sure. So thank you for that clarification. Did you have a question? Yeah, so we had talked last week about, is it, and I know maybe it's too late now, but to just have one article approving the budget or disproving the budget. I mean, I know it's already written, but... Right. There is only one. This is a standard one that we have to have mm -hmm. on the warrant, but there's only one article, Article 3, which approves the, the budget as a whole. And and I think that, as they just mentioned, this ties back into the funding aspect of it. Okay. Right. Yeah. If I may, the way I understand it is it sets the salaries. It basically says, you know, assuming that there is funding available or provided, this is what the salaries would be for those positions. Compensations, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, roll call. Galvin I. Whiteman I. And Nichols I. 
All right, Article 3, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds such sums of money as may be necessary to defray the expenses of municipal departments for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022, provided, however, that the vote taken here under shall be expressively contingent upon passage by the voters at an election of a Proposition 2.5 override question allowing the town to raise by taxation a sum of money in excess of the limited established by 2.5 or take any action in relation thereto. I'd like to make a motion to accept Article 3 as read. Wait a second, but may I ask uh, for just clarification? This is basically setting us up, saying that everything voted on going forward is contingent on the two and a half. Is that my understanding? Yes, that's correct. Okay. I hold my second. Okay. Uh, roll call. Galvin, I. White, I. And Nichols, I. Article 4, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or appropriate from available funds a sum of money to defray the expenses of Southern Western County Regional Vocational School Assessment for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to accept Article 4 as read. Wait a second. Any comments? Roll call. Galvin, I. Wait a minute. Uh, Article 5, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of money to defray the expenses of the Wachusett Regional School District, minimum local contributions for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to accept Article 5 as read. Wait a second. Any questions? Roll call. Delvin, I. Wait a minute. Oops. Article 6, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of money to defray the expenses of the Wachusett Regional School District Debt Service Assessment for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, or take any action in relation year two. I make a motion to accept Article 6 as read. Wait one second. Any comments or questions? Roll call. Galvin, I. Wait one second. <laughs> Article 7, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of money to defray the expenses of the Wachusett Regional School District Transportation Assessment for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to accept Article 7 as read. Wait a second. Any questions? Roll call. Galvin, I. Wait a minute. And Nichols, I. Article 8, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of money to defray the expenses of the Wachusett Regional School District Operations Assessment for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, and shall be expressly contingent upon passage by the voters to, at an election of a, pro, a proposition override question allowing the town to raise by taxation a sum of money in excess of the limit established by Proposition 2.5 or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to accept Article 8 is read. Wait one second. So for clarification, this is for that, um, the ask above and beyond the MLC, correct? The, yes. Know, it's like 2.3% or whatever that overage is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Make a second. So, the, but, excuse me, to the chair. Sure. Um, this says in excess of limit established by Proposition 2.5. Is that referencing the override? Right. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's but if Article 3 is a general statement. If that passes, does this then move? But that's for general. That's for municipal government. That's for general, yeah. Okay. General. So the school is a separate one. Okay. So this this, okay. this ties them into the override as well. So what, why didn't that happen with the... Because, because this is the operational... This is, this this is the, the only one we can touch. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank okay. you. Roll call. Galvin I. White I. And Nichols I. <laughs> Article 9, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of money as may be necessary to defray the expenses of debt service for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to accept Article 9 as read. Wait a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Galvin, I. Wait a minute. Any nickel time? 
Article 10, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from receipts and re revenues of the water and sewer enterprise or from any other available funds a sum of money to operate the water and sewer department for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023, or take any action in relation thereto. Uh, make a motion to accept Article 10 as read. 20 seconds. Any discussion? Roll call. Galvin, aye. Wait, and Nichols I. All right. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate or transfer from receipts and revenues of the PEG access and cable fund or from any other available funds a sum of money to fund the PEG access and cable related operations for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023 or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to accept Article 11 as read. Wait a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Galvin, aye. Point aye. And Nichols, aye. Article 12, to see if the town will vote to transfer from available funds a sum of money to cover expenses from the snow and ice supply account 001423540000 for fiscal year 2023 or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to accept Article 12 as read. Wait a second, should I have a question about this one? Sure. Um, is this... This is free cash spending, correct? So are we lumping free cash in with the warrant articles for this as we have in the past couple years? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roll call. Galvin, aye. Whitman, aye. And Nicholson. All right, Article 13 to see if the town will vote to appropriate a sum of money for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023 for capital equipment, building, facilities, and other projects included as <coughs> applicable site um, preparation, demolition, equipping, equipping of vehicles, and all other incidental and related costs, or to authorize the select board to take any eminent domain purchase or otherwise acquire any fee, easement, or interest in land necessary thereto to determine whether funding shall be provided by the tax levy transfer from available funds, borrowing, or any combination of these methods, and as may be applicable to fund the borrowing or any... Oops. <coughs> Did I reread that right? Authorized lease. Authorized lease. Thank you. I lost my line now. <laughs> Purchases agreements and further to authorize the select board to apply for, accept, and expend any federal or state grant funds or private donations that may be available for such capital improvements and to take such other actions as may be necessary to effect effectuate the vote taken here under or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to accept Article 13 as read. Wait a second. Any discussion? So this sets up, what are we buying? Right. So capital improvement, and nobody's here from that? Nobody's here from CIPC. I think the only thing that was scheduled to purchase on a sewer or an enterprise, water and sewer enterprise, was a you know, small <coughs> dump with a plow. They have approved several items in the past, but they're not, uh, obviously they're not here, uh, and nothing being put on the schedule. I think it just authorizes them as a committee, CIPC. So, so, but there's a comment here about two two thirds vote for stabilization fund is used. So, oh, I'm sorry, that's supposed to say if yeah. used. That was my spelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my. Term. If stabilization fund is used, used. Okay. right? But so there's nothing that we're purchasing. This is just a, 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 approving them to do whatever they have to do, which they have to come back to us anyway. Correct. Like that still wraps it back to the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. More a generality. Yeah, well, and they have to come back for a stabilization. They have to come back to a town meeting anyway. Right. Okay. If I may, I think this one and another one allowing, I think, to authorize select board to go enter into contracts and stuff. We had this conversation with legal in the past couple of years, and they're just kind of blanket ones that need to be placed in order to allow the committees or, or, or boards to do their jobs, but it's not a free pass to do whatever. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to spending, it needs to be like large spending, mm -hmm. I think. Just for clarification, is select board two words or one word? Two words. It is? Yep. Yeah. Right. Any other comments? Roll call. Galvin, I. Whitman, I. Nichols, I. 
Article 14, to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to enter into contract for goods and services for a duration in excess of three years pursuant to provisions of MGLC 30B, 12B, or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to accept Article 14 as read. Wait a second. Any comments or questions? Roll call. Galvin aye. Wait aye. And Nichols aye. Article 15, to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to apply for, accept, and expend any grant or donations from state and <coughs> federal governments or private agencies, expend um, individuals or institutions, or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to accept Article 15 as read. Wait a second. Any comment? Roll call. Gail and I. Wait a minute. Article 16, to see if the town will vote to appropriate all funds which become available from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Highways in fiscal year 2024, Chapter 90 bond issue pro proceeds or other grant program funds to be used by the Department of Public Works for the repair and maintenance of town roads in, com in conformance with Massachusetts general law, and further that the town will vote to raise said appropriation by borrowing and, and to authorize the town treasurer with approval of the select board to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore in anticipation of receipt of said state aid or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to accept article 16 as read. Wait a second. Any comments? Roll call. Galvin aye. Wait a minute. Nichols aye. Article 17, to see if the town will vote pursuant to the provisions of MGLC 4453E and a half to establish the fiscal year 2024 spending limit for the revolving funds listed in section six of the bylaw of the same name as set forth in article number 17 of the warrant with such expend expenditure limits to be applicable for each fiscal year until such time as town meeting votes prior to July 1st in any year to change the name of the ensuing fiscal year Provide, how, provided, however, that at the request of the entity authorized to expend such funds, the select board with the approval of the finance committee may increase such limit for the fiscal year only or take any action in relation thereto. Revolving funds, animal control department, 6,000, board of health, 60,000, planning board, 75,000, recreation department, $210,042, Safe place two hundred six dollars and six hundred and eight, and tax title five thousand, and zoning board of appeals five thousand. Make a motion to accept Article Seventeen as read. Wait a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Yeah, and I. Wait a minute. And Nichols I. Article 18, to see if the town will vote pursu pursuant to MGLC 411B to change the position of town clerk from elected to appointed provided, however, that if approved by town meeting and, and wait a minute, approved by town meeting and then by voters of the town at the 2024 annual town election, the change to the manner of selection will occur as soon as the appointment is made or take any action in relation thereto. I can stop you for just a second. On that additional document that I gave you, these are two different options that town council said that you can go with. Um, the wording in the second one uh, can change. It's up to the board how you would like the transition to go. Essentially, the first one is going to be a statutory change, and it will require a ballot question. The second one gives the board more flexibility. It would be a special legislation, would not need a ballot question. It would just be subject to approval of the general court. Um, the second one allows you more flexibility as to whether you want it to take place upon her retirement, upon the end of her elected term. Um, and as soon as you appoint somebody, that that takes effect, that supersedes um, anything that happens at an election. So I did detail that information for you on the other document. And even if we went with the first option, <clears throat> it would be able to get on the ballot anyway, right? Correct. You'd have to wait until May of 2024 to put it on the ballot. This, The second option allows you to submit it now. There's no way of knowing how long it will take the general court to approve it and send it back, um, but it would not require a ballot question. 
So it's a po it's a policy decision. The town Council said that the board has to make. Did you send this out? Yep, everybody received it. And I so, Le it. so Leah, you you can see this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I have. I, go ahead. I guess I ha I have. I feel like this is not um, to the to the extent of some things, but I think that this is changing a little bit of government, and I think that the voters should have a say in that. Um, I didn't realize that there were two options until we got clarification from legal. So um, I just am thinking contextually in the concept of other things that we were working on for the charter and other things. There was a strong push to make sure that there was like uh, voter involvement in that and not to just put it in the hands of uh, to make these larger government uh, decisions um, as a petition. But I mean, I. So we could go with the first I, option. It just wouldn't go to this election. It would be whatever the next election right, is. Right, right. And I think that was my, that was definitely my understanding um, going into it that, that when we only thought it was this one option that it had pursuant to MGL uh, was very much that it would be at this town meeting and then a subsequent vote at town meeting. Um, I think there is value to the home run rule amendment or the, um, the other piece, um, but I I think for something of this nature, it's better to have buy-in from from the town as a whole if it's changing the way um, the function of some government. I don't I don't know. I'm open to discussion, conversation. I don't feel super strongly either way. My only question is, it says following the elect the ballot uh, have a ballot within sixty days, so that we have to have it. No, no, no. It, meaning you can't put it on a ballot for 60 days following the town meeting vote, which is why we can't do it this year. Okay, so we, but it can stay there it. until the next vote. So you could put it on the 2024 ballot, or you go with the, the other option, um, which just gives the board a little bit more flexibility moving forward. Do we think most people are going to remember that from this May to next May? No. No. I mean, not not for nothing, but if they come to town meeting, they are voting for it, making the vote for it. Right. So, uh, to the chair, are we... Or against it. Is Article 18 giving the town meeting <coughs> option here of doing one or the other? No, no we have presented one. Of we present one. So, we them. will... You guys will select one of the two. Right. Okay. I mean, this, this is going to take, this legislation, special legislation is going to take some time, I, I imagine, right? I mean, Karen does make a good point that the voters are are at at a meeting and and approving it. If they feel strongly about it, then they, they come to that meeting. I, I can, like I said, I don't feel super strongly. It was just a consideration, and I can make arguments either way. Um, so... No way is it a unilateral decision by the by uh, by select board. Um, it's still if it passes and town at town meeting, then that means they're okay with it. And if it doesn't, and we know at general election, like at our usual municipal elections, there's not a huge voter turnout. Generally, some years are, are different, but um, it's. Like I, said, I don't feel strong either way. May I ask a question? Um, when they switched the treasurer criteria for being elected to appointed, does anybody remember if that had a ballot question as well? It did? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't hear that answer, Tamika or Lindsay. It Seth, did or did Seth, not. Seth said it did the following. It was at, it was at a ballot. It was a ballot question at, at the so, I mean, I think either one is going to take a while. I guess the second ver version gives more flexibility, I believe, correct? Yes, because you, so she worded it um, to take effect upon retirement, but she said that does not have to be the case. The board could change it to say upon you know, the end of her term um, in 2024. If you could, you know, how she said basically the flexibility is up to the board, how you want to do the transition. So how do either one of these options fall into what I just read? Does it, do I read this? Is this going to be the article now? One of these? This is what we're going to what? read? No, so either the, the first one that's there will be the article or the one underneath it will be the article. That's simply Between just... Between the, these two or no? This is clarification. That, yes, that's okay. just explanation. So the first one I read is this one. Correct. 
Okay. Yeah, the second one would be the special legislation. So right, how I just it's worded make sure here. They can. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, second one. I think the second one makes sense. As far as it, it gives us all the do you, do you agree with that, Leah? Going with the second, with the uh, special legislation? Yeah, I mean, that's okay. And I guess if, if for some, and I'm playing devil's advocate, if for some reason it doesn't pass, can we, because it's a different article, the intent is doing the same, we could always bring it back either at the special or at the fall. Right. Or, I mean, at the special or the next annual with the MGL basic. I think there is value to having it as a, uh, an appointed position, um, especially as things have increased the, the amount of knowledge that is required. Um, so, but I, that's, that, that's my consideration. So yeah, I'm fine to go for the, the second. Right, and I think this gives us flexibility. So you could drag it, all, you could push it off for a while, right? With this one, you said right. you, you would have to. So the board would have to decide if you wanted to take effect upon her retirement or at the end of her term. Oh. Because if she chooses to run for another term, then she would have to be appointed instead of elected. But it still is wrong. Right. If she runs for another term and doesn't win, then what happens? If she runs for another <laughs> term, and as and, and she wins, as right. soon as if this she doesn't win, then does it kick right into an appointment? No. If she wins <laughs> or she doesn't win, the select board, as soon as you make an appointment whether it's Anita or it's somebody else, that supersedes whatever the vote is at the election. I specifically asked that question of Lauren. So if this passes, it becomes an appointed position. So if there is an election held and before, say there's an election held because it hasn't come back yet from the general court, if it then comes back during her term, the appointment supersedes the election. So you would then have to Appoint Anita, time, or exactly, right. or you're going to appoint somebody different. So you just have to decide if you're going to do this on her retirement or on the end of her term in 2024. If I may, I I thought the conversation in the fall when this was kind of first brought up, but then um, nobody really knew a lot about it. Was um, the hope that it would be at her retirement? But um, I don't know if that has changed. Like, I don't know if that's changed. I don't know. Um, I think. Well, I, I guess my question would be, at the end of her term, she could be appointed anyway, correct? Yes, you, right. yep. so, you would have the choice to appoint her. So you, you could, uh, we could, the board could appoint her, and then she would be appointed until her retirement, right? Mm -hmm. Right, it just wouldn't be an elected position anymore. Right. That's all. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, it makes I, sense. <laughs> Unless she does something really bad between now and then. I mean, I'm not going to be on the board, so it's going to be your problem. <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> no, but I mean, I mean, it makes sense unless other people have a, a, an issue with that. All right, so scratch what I read because that was the first version, correct? Right. And then I, ha I have to clarify the... On the end of her term. Or the expiration of her term. So is that in, is that in the verbiage in this section, or did you... Instead of saying upon, upon the retirement of, you would just say upon the expiration of the elected town clerk's seat. And I'll double-check that with Lauren before we finalize it. Okay, so, so take out upon the retirement. Yep. Change it to uh, on the expiration of her term. On the expiration. <clears throat> well, that no, we said the, upon the the, uh, the end of her term, right? Because then she could just be appointed. Right. Yep. That's what I said. Upon the expiration of the term of the elected town clerk. Okay. 
All right, see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to file with the general court special legislation to change the office of town clerk from elected to appointed with such change to take effect upon the expiration of the term of the town clerk provided how and then sooner vacate the office. Do I still do the provided no, general holding court? office at the time? At the time. <clears throat> I'm just trying to and to authorize the select board to approve changes. Do we still keep that section in? Yeah, in yeah. Everything is staying the same except for retirement and switching to expiration of the term. Within the public purposes of the petition or take any action in relation there to. Make a motion to accept Article 18 as read. Wait a second. Okay. Any, oh. any other comments? All right. Roll call. Galvin, aye. White, aye. And Nichols, aye. Okay. Article 19. To see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to grant a non-exclusive access and grading easement on the town-owned property located on Zero Christmas Tree Lane, which property is identified by the assessors or partial 41A, A22, and described as parcel 2 and deed record <coughs> with Worcester South County District... Registry of Deeds in Book 6776, page 276, to the owner of the property located at 5 Christmas Tree Lane on such terms and conditions for such consideration as the select board deems appropriate or take any action in relation thereto. Did we already, like, discuss this at the board? We have discussed this. And, um, so it's a temporary construction easement. Just wanted to use town property for access to his property. Initially, the owner at 5 Christmas Tree Lane wanted to purchase its it's roughly a 40 by 40 piece um, in an easement at the end of Christmas Tree Lane, and we decided against that because if we ever had to have access to the school buildings or property, then he would own the property. So we decided against uh, a purchase. He then asked for a permanent um, easement, which we also, Mr. Buckley and myself, decided against. So we uh, did grant, well, with his counsel, which he's paying for all legal fees, for a temporary construction easement so he can repair his property. So how, how does this say temporary? How does this? It doesn't. Does, it doesn't. It, this doesn't say temporary, but I'm no. just looking at non-exclusive. So this gives him permanent easement. Oh, we don't believe this gives him permanent easement. I don't think so. The town council um, reviewed the easement document. Shireen reviewed it, um, made edits, sent it back. Um, so the, all of it has been reviewed by town council. But I don't see anything here that says that it, it's going to be, ex, it's expired, it's Does temporary. Does somebody have their supporting documents handy? Because I included the easement in the supporting documents. I don't think it's not exclusive. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't print the easement here in that packet because I was trying to save on some paper. But it meant the email, email copy. I have the actual email. easement. If you wanted, I have the email copy. Do you want the email? <laughs> no, well, I just didn't know if anybody had it to pull out. <laughs> I do. I have it on my computer if you oh, want to say it that way. Yeah. And I, I do think here, I think the non exclusive is the legal Right. That's the legal um, way of saying. Yeah, so does that clearly sure. show, uh, Karen, that it's. Hold on one second. I'm going to find it first. <laughs> You sent that on the Friday. That didn't come today, right? Uh, correct. Yep. Okay. You know what? Here's all the emails you sent me. <laughs> There's a lot of them. No, 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 no. I just know that you'll be able to find it faster than I will. There's a lot going on right now. Hmm. Of course, Google Perch says exclusive means that uh, anyone can use it, non exclusive. No, exclusive is only one person can use it. So, really, that's not saying that that's that has nothing to do with temporary. Right. <laughs> It does not sound at it's all. It's actually saying that it's anyone could use it. <laughs> so why don't we just put the right word in that we like? Make it easy. 
<laughs> so it can't be contentious later in some. Legal 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 should just be simply <clears throat> replaced with temporary. Could we say not to exceed um, or expires at a certain date, like so many days or something? Okay. I think I if you put temporary, it's question. even easier. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. temporary. It's temporary. It's not temporary. There's got to be an end date. So that's this right. isn't. Maybe an <clears throat> so this doesn't tie the property up for when it forever. So. Until construction is complete. How so long do they think it's going to take, Gary? What do we give them for an expiration? Um, once it's settled, three months, six months. Depends upon if it really. So it's not going to take long. You just got to get in and do it. But if you want the wording changed, we'll just change uh, non-exclusive. Just do it to the end of the calendar year. Done. He's not going to do it in winter in Rutland, that's for sure. No, he couldn't. He tried to actually get this. Yeah, yeah. so. I have it. I have it. <laughs> he laid it at the end of, you know, sunset it at the end of the year and screw it, it's done. Is it recorded? The easement's actually recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Is that the what? Will the, will the easement be recorded at the Registry of Deeds? It should be. Yeah, yeah okay. I would think so. So you can't, you know, that's where you put it. It goes in that document. Here it is. We can't. It's there. It was sent on Monday the 10th. That's why. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's okay. I was like, it's got to be here. Leah. Yeah. I thought when we talked about this at our, like when we last talked about this at our uh, select board meeting, that we had put a time frame on it, but I don't recall the specifics of that, or maybe not. I right, I think it was like a, it was an informal temporary access. There was no formal. Yeah, it was it was, it was six months. The license agreement you did was six months. It went through, uh, I believe, May 28th. Um, but she okay. wasn't able to do the work that he needed to do because that was primarily in the wintertime. So that's why okay. they decided to move forward with this easement, which gives him, allows him more time. Well, um, why wouldn't we just do a new agreement? Yeah, I thought our conversation was that we would be amenable to extending right. the... You guys are way wasting that too much time. Access Especially knowing that it was going to be likely over the winter. I'm but not, I could be wrong. My, I thought that was the agreement. I'm not comfortable doing like an official easement. We gave him permission to access the property for a period of time. And if he needs an extension, he should approach the board for an extension right. of time. I don't know why we have to do a, a formal easement. And why if I may, I'm not sure who else there, Gary, Joe. Um, traditionally, is, is it better, less liability, whatever, to, to do a formal easement such as this? Or are we okay by continuing to offer the, the extensions? Because we're talking right now about another six or seven month um, agreement here. It seems like we could just do that extension and that as long as there's open communication, I don't know that that would change and he's actually getting, you know, I would assume he'd be able to start doing work within the next, next couple, you know, months or so. I don't know for sure. Right, it's not uncommon pro practice no. to allow temporary access. I, I don't know why it, it would have to be a form. For their heirs, successors, and assigns. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I'm not a comfortable yeah. at all in the formal reason. I'm like, uh, I really yeah. see well, that. That's what we already gave him, though, right? Isn't that what we already gave him? But we didn't even know this was going to be put on a, on the warrant. So. This is what's already he's already has. So this probably should have been discussed no, with us previously. Easement. This is grant of easement. See, article of the town meeting, a certified copy. I think he put a temporary. Well, we've already done that. We already have a, a, an informal temporary access so he can come and get an, an extension on, in my opinion. Scratch this one. We don't have to do anything as far as. Well, well did, 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 I want to make sure we have, what? I'm sorry. Actually, we need to make a motion to not place it. So right. So yeah, the board needs to make a motion either way. I make a motion to not accept Article 19. Place. Place Article 19. Wait a second, but I would just like, if possible, to have clear communication. Go back to the. 
the individual that it's not that we're objecting to him using the property to do the work that we've already agreed to him doing. It's more the, that we're not comfortable with this part of the process, if that makes sense. It does. It'll happen. Thank you. All right, Article 20, to see if the town will vote to appropriate a sum of money from free cash or other available cash. Sorry, I don't... Do we need to oh, vote I'm sorry. or not? Uh, yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Roll call. Galvin, aye. White, aye. Nichols, aye. Thank you. Um, Article 20, to see if the town will appropriate a sum of money from free cash or other available funds for the repair and improvements of fence along the retaining wall available for the... And at the end of the picnic area behind Town Hall, including but not limited to fixing and painting the picket fence, adding fencing to control access to the town pool, and placement of borders as barriers to prevent future vehicle damage to the fence and all other incidental and related expenses or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to place Article 20. Wait a second. Okay, so what do we have for free cash and what is this going to cost? It's in your packets. Uh, and Karina is here too, but she's requesting the $7,500. Do you want to the, the snow and ice estimate is like 192,000, I think. That's adding in 9,000 that's going to be on this coming warrant. We had, uh, if we use our, leave the 150 that we want to leave in our free cash reserve, um, it leaves free cash for use of 348,386. With snow and ice being 192, uh, we're using 150 for the budget. It only leaves fifty five seventy four available in free cash. No enough to cover this. Then. Mm -hmm. The only the only caveat you could tap into the one hundred and fifty that we're using to carry forward into the next year. It's not advised. It's not in our policies to do that. But it's clear. Yeah. I think. I mean. I think that this is an important piece because it's, I would argue not having the, the pool accurately contained as a safety risk and everything. Um, and also I know that we have, I, I didn't realize how tight free cash was at last time we had heard it was higher. So I, I, I struggle kind of for anything into our conversation on Monday about placing even the article that the fire brigade brought, brought forward. We don't have the free cash to, to spend here, like right now. So, Right. I, we already nixed the, the article for free cash on the fire brigade. Right. I, that's what I'm saying. We nixed that one. I thought I wasn't sure how much free cash was going to be remaining. And... I wasn't also sure why the fire brigade came before us and this one didn't when it was why this one was placed without coming before us for a better conversation about um, free cash and free cash is that tight. So um, I think that we need something there, but if free cash is there, then we don't have the free cash. Like, I don't. Well, I mean, hopefully, and, if two and a half passes, we'll have right. more funds available for repairs. <coughs> right. I just wanted to say when this was on the warrant, excuse me, yeah, the warrant, um, we, at the time we still had 14-2 left in free cash, and I and I did put it on because it was a, a town department that had submitted their request, yeah. whereas the other one yeah. would have been a citizen's petition. Um, and then we just recently found out, today we were talking about the additional amount needed for snow and ice, so this was a very late revelation that we weren't going to have enough to make this work. Yeah, that's fine. So I guess I withdraw my second with regret, but if we don't have the money, if we can't guarantee that we have the money, then we can't guarantee that we have the money. And right. it and sounds like and, we and hopefully we'll, don't have the money. We'll address it as a priority in the override. Yeah, when it passes, our, yeah. Hopefully it passes. Other than that. So how do I do it? Do I re... So I guess she she withdrew her second, so right now somebody can make a motion to withdraw uh, to... Not place. Not place. Thank you. Uh, I make a motion to not place Article 20. 
Wave and seconds again with regret for all of this stuff, but it is what it is. Uh, roll call. All right. Article 21 to see if the town will vote to accept the provision of MGLC 41110A, allowing the town clerk's office to remain closed on all Saturdays as a legal holiday for calculating the time frame for filling ma for filing matters that that office or take any action in relation thereto. This was requested by Anita. Right. Uh, this well, is kind of a to... yeah. Do you guys want to just make a want to put do you want to just discuss it? Uh, this is just kind of it's a procedure. Yeah, I, <laughs> I if I may. Yep. I, it sounds like by declaring every Saturday a legal holiday, then if that takes the burden off of the clerk's office to have to provide staffing and um, requirements if a deadline falls on the, the Saturday. Is that my understanding? It doesn't impact any other day of the week, like... Or well, it's just weird. It's like declaring it as a holiday, so it's like... <coughs> yeah. There's a holiday you get paid though. every time. Uh, there's a holiday, but the wording is specific to MGL. That's how MGL right. defines it. MGL. <coughs> so it says that every Saturday is a legal holiday when calculating time frame. Right. So time. So they they're just saying no. They're saying for time frame. So when turning in paperwork, a Saturday doesn't count because it's a legal holiday. So you move it on, like. Seventeenth is a holiday, so we have until Tuesday for a tax. Oh, that okay. Kind of so, stuff. oh, I see. What you're it's only for calculating and stuff. Right. The, yeah, the the, the, the client is saying it's a legal holiday is what was confusing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not gonna get another holiday. Not gonna get fifty two. So, so this just means that you don't count that time as exactly. Part of the it's just so it's just like the uh, Patriots <coughs> we get an extra day for taxes. Right. It's the, only, it's the same thing, except now when she's calculating stuff, it won't count Saturday. Right. It'll go to that you know Monday. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Make a motion to place Article 21 as read. Wait a second. Okay, roll call. Galvin, I. Wait a And Nichols, I. All right, Article 22 to see if the town will vote to uh, persuade it to the provision of MGLC 41 to, to increase the term of the elected town moderator position from one year to three years, which such increase to take effect beginning at the 2024 annual town election or take any action any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to place Article 22 as read. Wait a second. Any discussion or questions? Okay. I just oh, my ahead. comment was I was always confused why it was a one year mm -hmm. position anyway. Right. So um yeah, I think that that's the only one year position in town. Um I'm not mistaken, so right. it makes sense to me that it goes to three years. Yeah. Do we have we heard back from town council whether or not we need special legislation for this? We do not need special legislation. We don't need a ballot question for the town to approve changing the term. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Roll call. Galvin I. And Nick is there. I mean, there's only one person that ever runs anyway, so what does that do? That's hard. You're stuck with him, man. <laughs> turn off for two more years. Right. We, we have another chance. He's not listening, so. <laughs> All right. Article 23, to see if the town will vote pursuant to the provisions of MGLC 4452E and a half to establish a revolving fund for a parking lot in Play field maintenance at town schools as currently described in school lease agreement between the town of Rutland and Wachusett Regional School District and for such purposes to amend the general bylaw revolving funds section 6 by adding a new row at the end of the chart appearing therein as follows. Revolving funds, school facility maintenance, authorized to spend the Department of Public Works, uh, revenue sources, lease payment, and use of funds is school facility maintenance or described in the lease agreement with Wachusett Regional School District. You're good. Okay. Uh, make a motion to place Article 23 as read. Wait a second. 
seconds, but I have a couple questions or, or comments or, or conversation, I guess, if that's okay. Yeah. So I think the intent of this is the currently the, the school payments go into the general fund and are just part of general fund and um, appropriated with all of general fund money. I think if I understand correctly, they are kind of, I don't want to say earmarked, but with the end, that that lease payment is with the agreement that the work is going to be done at the schools and everything. And I think normally I would be not such a fan of creating a whole bunch of revolving accounts. And also given the budget cycles in the past few years and what they've done to DBW, I think the concern is there's no way to legally uphold our lease agreement if this money is not set aside specifically for that. I, I but I don't know. I mean, I'm happy to listen to the other perspectives. So would this allow for outsourcing if we wanted to hire somebody to do the work? Yes. If there's not, so it does allow for that. So if there isn't sufficient staffing, then they could they could probably hire a independent. Company to right. and I think provide the services. I think that it ensures that there's that there's that fund amount available to the schools, so that they can ensure that the work that needs to be done in the schools is done with that fund. Um, but I guess the question is, if the schools need more money, repair like the, the buildings or whatever need more money, then it's not going to come out of the revolving fund, I assume. This would be, I, I don't know. I, I guess I don't understand. Because right, this amount's going to be the amount of the agreed amount with the lease. So yeah, it will be set by the amount in the, set in the lease. Cannot exceed that amount. Correct. Yep. The only thing you have to keep in mind is the, the lease the game agreement is in your revenues. So we move it into this revolving fund. We need to reduce it from your revenue <laughs> if we don't have an override to pass your seventy-eight thousand more in the hole mm -hmm. that you have to cut. <clears throat> and through the chair, would the lease payments actually fund <clears throat> this work? Is there enough money there? If we do move it out of revenues, and it becomes a standalone revolving fund, is there enough money there to do the work? Okay. Um, in the last budget cycle, do you mind if I go ahead to the chair? In the last budget cycle, when we were asked to cut 5% more, we actually cut the amount required to create line items in the DPW budget so that we could outsource this work so that we could honor the lease agreement. Plainly, DPW doesn't have the resources to do it anymore. Okay. And we, with the cuts we've seen over the last three or four years, it does, maybe the override will pass. But this was put in, put in place as a tool so that the board who signed the lease agreement could actually honor the lease agreement. It's not an agreement between public works and the school department, it's between the board. So um, that it's, it, was given, it was drafted as a tool to help you folks comply. So is that so something in, you... In the event that the, the override doesn't go through, we've created line items in the budget and we're gonna hire people to do it anyways because there's nobody at DPW left to do it. So when you went out to bid, did, did the bids come in less than this amount? Historically, DPW has already always done all the work that's listed in the agreement because we're already out plowing or we're already out sweeping. But the proposed cuts at the time were so severe, we couldn't honor the agreement. You follow? I understood. Right. So, so he, do, he doesn't have any estimates. So um, cost. Oh, you haven't gotten bids no. yet? No, no. no. He doesn't I can know. tell you what I can tell you what we spend is roughly twenty percent of that money using DPW resources. Okay. So we were comfortable thinking we would have adequate funds. How is this going to work into your budget? <laughs> the override doesn't pass. It's not going to be good anyway. So. But in your updating on the budget Tuesday night, are you going to reflect? Yeah, we'll have change? to take it from the. We'll have to take it from the general fund revenue. Yep. Well, unless did you, you said you created lines. I put line items in the DPW budget. So we'll be able to remove able to those fire. lines from the expense as so well. Now, when you see snow and ice, so snow and ice was two hundred thirty-nine thousand. We took <coughs> money from other snow and ice items, created a plow the school 
line items okay. so we could hire somebody to do it. That, that's what we did. So we did sure something similar with the, the parking lot maintenance and the, the fields. The way the agreement is structured, we don't have to cut the school fields, but we can let the common grow as long as we want. Right. You know, the, the group here signed an agreement, and we're, this is only in place to honor the agreement. That's all it's for. So, are we good? Any other comments? Or? Did we make a motion already? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. made the motion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. It's, been so it's, long. it's early yet, too. <laughs> all right. Uh, roll call. Yeah, and I. Wait, and I. And I. All right. Article 24. To see if the town will vote to accept the provision or MGLC 4453F and a half for the purpose of establishing a stormwater enterprise fund to be effective July 1st, 2023, and in conjunction therewith to establish a budget for said enterprise for 2024 as follows. Anticipated enterprise receipts, $228,014.82. Expenditures, salary zero. Total revenues, $228,014.82. Expenses, two hundred five thousand dollars Reserve fifteen thousand total expenditure twenty two hundred and twenty thousand. We're taking the action in relation here to make a motion to place article twenty four as read. Wait one second. I have a question for um I guess both of these establishing um revolving funds. Yep. We establish we establish them. Do we also have to fund fund them, or does that come in the article itself? I mean, in the motion itself. I know that there's been drama in the past about we didn't do things properly you have to establish a fund, and then you to have establish to establish a new revolving fund. Is there a process so, beyond that? So this this is an enterprise fund. Okay. So it functions like the water and sewer. So you would have to, and I'm not sure, I didn't really talk to Joe about it, um, how the revenue is going to be generated through permits or are we doing a no, new billing, billing like, like we do water and sewer billing, are we doing stormwater billing to all of the residents? I think part of Leah's sure. question is, is by placing this article going to establish the enterprise fund? It is. Just by doing this? Yes. Yeah. But then how do you fund it? Well, because it established a funding as well. The, yeah, that's the question. The town meeting doesn't fund it because it's not a revolving fund. It's an enterprise fund. Right. This is an enterprise fund. So, so we'd have to, have to taxpayers would fund Joe's, it. Joe's going to tell you that. I'll do my best. It's in the original <laughs> It's in the original documents. I, Tamika, did you send it forth in a packet? I did. Okay. Yes, sorry. So it's a, per pa it's a, per, a flat fee per parcel, yep. and it's roughly 17 55. 55 a quarter per parcel. <laughs> and, um, yeah. yep. Yep. and if you say um, uh, DEP, or I think DEP has three models for setting up a stormwater utility. Um, this is the most simple one. And If I may share, I mean, maybe this may be just a, another discussion, but that is that going to be billed? The DPW going to generate the bills and mail them out? And part of the whole collection process? Um, is that where we're? It would probably be very similar to water and sewer, but that budget includes indirect fees that would go to your folks and be done similar to water and sewer. <coughs> but this is everybody in town. Everybody across the board. I did speak to um, town accountant Donna about it, and she do, does have to just kind of check things with DOR and DLS as, as to establishing it and checking on how it's all going to no, In some places, um, cities and towns are able to fund street sweeping pretty regularly, able to fund catch basin cleaning pretty regularly, um, and they've got better uh, support staff to do construction inspection. We just don't. Um, it's a federal mandate, yes. Um, cities and towns sued the federal government from Massachusetts, sued the federal government in law. Um, this is compliance with the Clean Water Act. In a perfect world, I don't think it would cost that much if we were doing some more, doing some more regular maintenance here in Rutland, but we struggle for being able to afford to do that. Um, so when we saw this next round of cuts coming through, we put this in place to help the town comply. Um, perfect example, the street sweeper. 
it's original in 1999, and we have three people on staff. If we sweep streets, we have two people <laughs> sweeping streets. It, us doing it in-house is not realistic. Uh, most of the work that's outlined in the um, enterprise would go out to bid. So how often have the billing, does the billing occur? Quarterly. 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 So four times a year. $70.20 a year. Well, and so I'm not as concerned about that. I we am. Have to have, <laughs> we have to have people to send out bills four times a year. Can it be Thank added you. to the tax bill? Yeah. Yes, you could. Well, it has to stay. It's its own enterprise, so it's it a the, separate line the item. reporting on it. It could probably go. I again, I don't know. It could probably go maybe as a fee with the water and sewer added that way. Um, but again, it's but not everybody's it's on water and sewer. That's right. It's not going to hit everyone, so it would have to be the tax or something. Yeah, like I that. don't. We'd have to talk to DOR and DLS. I have no idea how how it would, would work. And again, it's another. It's another task. It's, for if we, <laughs> if we're cutting back staff, if the override doesn't pass, it's just another. Yeah. But by not funding it, we're just waiting for the government to come down and, and nab us. We'll come and get well, it. I, the, the, There's no money. It's, it's unfunded mandate, like always. So uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I'm not we, saying we, we don't pay it, but I'm saying. <laughs> But realistically, right. the unfunded. Sorry, do you mind? Go ahead. I interrupted your. No, go ahead. Well, uh, excuse finance committee. Go ahead. I'm, I'm just a guest. <laughs> you know, you're a no. you're <laughs> in an open meeting. <laughs> my my comment is, if if we don't have the staff to do it, I don't care if we put this in because let them come and get it and then tell us how we're going to do it. What are they going to do to us? We've got no money. If the two and a half override doesn't pass, we haven't got any money. So you're going to burden every taxpayer in town, every parcel owner in town with $70 and 20 cents a year, which doesn't seem like much, but we're going to hit them with another potentially eight, $900 on top of that. And Oh, by the way, we haven't got staff to do it anyways. So, I'd say come and get it. I'm an old thickhead. How long has this mandate been in place? Years. Years. And we have, we've never complied. Well, the, the one for Rutland, that the permit was signed probably three years ago, and the stormwater management plan written. Um, so we've probably been out of compliance for three year, two to three years. Um, so if we don't comply, <coughs> is it the town administrator that goes to jail? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Truth be told, a couple, um, a lot of the stuff that's in the stormwater management compliance is is maybe twenty five percent of that enterprise account. Okay, the bulk of its stuff we should do as a town or a public works department. Regardless, we're just so thin we can't. I mean, we're sit. Keep in mind, in this last budget go around, we told people we're never going to sweep streets again. Um, we're, we're you know. <laughs> so I guess my. Through the chair. So my question for you is, if, if, even if we pass this, Joe, and I, I'm not trying to put you I in a bind. That. Even if we pass this, if the two and a half override doesn't pass, we're still not going to do right. what we're supposed to do. Right. Yes, we are. How are you going to? Where are you going to grow that guy? This is or that person. To, it'd have to go off a bid anyways. <clears throat> Currently, you can't clean catch basins in Rutland. You use. By means of example, in Rutland, you use Chapter 90 money, money that's supposed to go to pave streets or fix sidewalks. Okay. That's what you use to clean catch basins in Rutland. It's one-time money. So this stormwater money would go to clean those storm drains. And then you, hopefully that Chapter 90 money would be used <coughs> to pave a street. Cool. Thank you for making it more clear to me. Um, the street sweeping, realistically, our 1999 sweeper isn't going to, you know, you can't. Understood. We have brooms. <laughs> Do we have to fully fund it? Could we like do it in parts more? Like, I mean, it, um, we don't have to fully meet if we don't this fully meet the mandate, it. huh? This article doesn't fund it; it only establishes. But it's got funds going to come from somewhere. It's going to come from taxation. So if we don't, right, if we don't do mean. all of them, and we do so many a year, is there a way of breaking this down so it's not as expensive? Do you want to have a small? You want to cut the enterprise down? Do well, I don't know. It's, it wouldn't have less of an impact on the tax. Do, temporarily can I ask do we do we know if we have to start billing this like as of July 1 so I have to add it to the tax bills or do something right now or is it something like we're establishing it and then we can 
figure out how we're going to do it. Okay, next so we year. can establish it and just right. like I, I'm asking, didn't right? We, just like we had a town, know. we had a town administrator and didn't fund it for five years. Right. <laughs> so we could do one of those, right? If I may, <coughs> so I, when I spoke with Lauren about this, when she said that there are two options, and I put it in that document that I made for you, yes. you can either establish it for FY24 and fund it in 24, or you can establish it and then fund it in 25. I think that's but, but you'd have to change the wording in the article. Figure out how to do it. So can we just establish it and we'll, do we have to say we're going to fund it in clear. a specific date? Yeah. I think, yes, you have to, you have to specify something in the article, she said. So you either fund it in 24 or you fund it in 25. I think you got to so weigh your risk at that point. The, the people that govern our town have to weigh their risk. Are they willing to put the towns out on that edge because we didn't fund it or not? I mean, at least if we kick it out to 25 and then we say, oh, sorry, we just don't have the money. <laughs> We're well, not going to be able to meet the mandate. I don't know. You, could, you if, could establish it and then fund it in 25 right. if you did the wording. I think that would, I would, that say would give us time. I would say at least to do that because this is not the year to start throwing extra tax bills to right. residents. Well, Correct. The My problem question. is we've been we're two and a half to three years out of compliance now. What happens when they whack us? Who's going to take that risk? And again, this was put similar to the revolving fund to help the town comply with the school lease agreement. This was put into place to help the town comply with the stormwater management permit or the Clean Water Act. Um, the impetus behind it is the severe cuts we've seen at DPW over the last three years. We don't have the resources to do even the basic tasks anymore. So if you look at the track record, you, you want to try and put some tools in there to make sure we can comply. Mm -hmm. And just that that's all, uh, none of that money is intended to go to DPW. It's all meant to go to hire somebody else to do it because it's not getting done by us. Well, like I said, we haven't done it in all this time. So at least well, if we yeah, establish the account and we say we're going to fund it in 25, at least we don't have to worry about it. But just because you haven't registered your car and you never got caught doesn't mean that when you get caught, you're not in big trouble. <laughs> years ago, it does if you're a selectman. <laughs> I think you, that this shows that we're making the right. progress. We're if they came to us, we'd say we need we, to figure right. out how to that's generate the bills yeah. and what to do. Yeah, because that's how the government physically, works. Right. How, to, how to physically do it. Right. We're actually taking steps, we have, which right. we haven't done in three years. Right. But I just wanted to be clear. We're taking steps to address the severe shortfalls in DPW already that have been cut mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. fixing a problem. So you're hitting two things at the same time. So I know where you go. Go ahead. But we're asking to for the taxpayers to approve an additional tax that they're going to have to pay. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get what out of this? Clean, Clean water. Clean storm drains. Yeah. Clean storm drains. So they won't contaminate the water. It's a, okay. Compliance with right. a government right. mandate. Right. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. Oh, I will say people are very, um, they really like street sweeping in this town. Mm -hmm. So they do appreciate a good street sweep in the spring. <laughs> so I would, I would <laughs> say that. Sweep. Like a good, a good <laughs> sweep. Hey, Austin, <laughs> one day a week, could you go out and clean a street That's with a broom? Right. We'll get you a nice new one. <laughs> I will say, I mean, I think, so storm, this is, um, this practice is becoming a lot more, a lot more common in a lot of cities and towns across the Commonwealth. Because of this you know, coming mandate, or the mandate that's already been in place, there has been precedent of towns that have already been fined. Mm -hmm. Or uh, the federal government or state government through <coughs> their agency have come in uh, and taken regulatory action. I think establishing this fund and figuring out a way to, uh, to fund it at some point allows us to do all the things that, that Joe mentioned, but also um, we can start looking at our stormwater infrastructure and how to fund that. And this provides a funding mechanism to do that. So we don't have to come down to the town and say, we need a debt exclusion to do this because we can start building this fund uh, within its own uh, enterprise fund and, and find a way to fund that operation. It's a best practice. Um, it's something that is very common. It's recommended at the state level. And it's not, we're not setting a precedent here. We're not the first one to do this. If anything, we're probably late to the game to do this. So if, if the override were to pass, would there be any ability to fund, partially fund this? That's what I was just about to say. Could we put money in if we had money available with the overdrive? I mean, no, the overdrive. Okay. It'd be more of an accounting yeah. question to um, 200. Well, we'd certainly be in a better place. No, I don't think you could do so, the whole yeah. thing. Maybe. I, I, think, the sum, I think, right? but the revenue source is from the 
the, the tax so I don't know that right. we can take right. it from a, it's an the general place. fund. Right. And put right. it. It's like right. if the general fund it has just to gave come it to, for this, right? Exactly. Right. Like it's like the general fund just giving to water and sewer or something like that. Well, I think, I think it needs to. No, the general fund could give to water and sewer if they had to. Yeah, there is, a me- there is a mechanism for doing that. Why not just put another article in there and say if the override yeah. passes, you know, move sure that positive. X dollars into. I think that would be a, a vote. I'm sorry to keep talking. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Leah. Um, a couple things. I think Rutland needs to be mindful that we our current public water supply is a pond, and that is spring fed, and about half, if not more than half, of the town is on private wells. So I think that there is a lot of interest in in ensuring that our groundwater is, is clean and the, the steps, and especially given the cost of all the PFAS and everything. Um, the other thing is, is that with the setting of the the fee be a Board of Public Works decision and in conversation with um, Director Buckley. You could do it that way. There you go. The, or the incoming town administrator works with Director Buckley to come up with a plan. Right. I mean, I think that there's a lot of value in establishing this, and from a, a more from an environmental protection side of things for our sole water source and the water of all of our our <clears throat> town town people. So I think that it's important on that side. I struggle with the, the timing of the funding piece. And so that's why I'm wondering if we can look at mechanisms to, to, if we can establish the fund and then look at mechanisms to fund it. Well, I guess a little bit of time. time that, that was my preference to establish now it now and then to fund in 25. Is it 25? You yeah. said. So that's how you. Would and then in motion. between now and then, if we find other ways mechanisms to fund it, it gives us enough time to at least establish yeah. it because I mean because we can establish it and, and fund it at any time really it's just we need to fund it by 25 correct if we say 25 um, I don't know that there's a requirement there's probably a way that you could make some changes at a future town meeting um, mm-hmm. but it, it gives you another fiscal year to, to do that so is that the way you want to go establish now when to be, and then to pay in 25 I'm, I'm comfortable with that. For sure. If I may, through the chair, we um, try to do this. I don't know if you were on the board at the time. I don't I believe nobody else was. We tried to do this eight years ago. <coughs> uh, we had Fred I was not on this board. board. I was on that board. That <laughs> but we had the DEP. Yes, I remember. Do, uh, quite an extensive presentation on this. Because sooner or later, somebody's going to get whacked. Right. Eight years ago, for the same thing Mr. Buckley's trying to do now. For so we knew this was coming a long time ago. Oh, oh we did. Yep. This permitting and process. Nobody, was, and nobody was complying back then. So no, we, we, no, we, we were, started in 203, yeah, right. and we had to wait for the permitting process to be approved by New Hampshire and then accepted by Massachusetts. So it's been since 2003 when they they started the first. Yeah. No, I I, I think we do need to. Do <coughs> the concern is the whole situation what we're in with financially in the town now. So I think, in my opinion, going forward with establishing the account with uh, with the 25. So I just need to change the 24 to 25 to make it correct on this. Yep. So I'm going to read it. If you agree with it, you can vote on it. <laughs> To see if the town will vote to accept provision or MGL C4453 F and a half for the purpose of establishing a strong enterprise fund to be effective on July 1st, 2023, and in conjunction therewith to establish a budget for said enterprise for fiscal year 2025 as follows. Anticipated enterprise receipts, $228,014.82. I already did read this, didn't I? Yep. Salary zero. Revenue two twenty eight fourteen dollars and eight two cents expenses two hundred five revenue fifteen thousand in total of twenty two hundred and twenty thousand. These are any action these are fifteen thousand. Leah and Tom are making motions. But we we made a change, so I just did it as a correct. Got it. Correct. Mm-hmm. We voted on the motion. As read. Motion on. As uh, corrected or however you want to do it. Amended. Make a motion to place Article 24, amended Article 24, as read. Wait a second. Okay, roll call. Roll call. Uh, Galvin. <laughs> Wait a minute. Nichols, sorry. All right.
Alrighty, <coughs> Article 25, to see if the town will vote to, pur to purchase and equip a small dump truck with plow F550 or equivalent and for such purpose to transfer a sum of money from water and sewer re retained earnings or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to uh, place Article 25 as read. Appointment seconds. And I think we got clarification today in, or sometime recently in email. Thank you for that. So I did see that clarification. So, so she understood that it would be used for general plowing, not for just water and sewer plowing, correct? Okay. She says if the primary function of the vehicle is for water and sewer purposes, it's acceptable for them to use it for plowing when needed as well. Even though the water and sewer rate payers are paying for it. Correct. As long as the primary use of the vehicle is water and sewer, they are allowed to use it for plowing purposes as well. I, I and I would argue the rate payers benefit from adequate plowing if there were rapes or, or anything. <laughs> well, yeah, they're going to benefit. Everybody's going to benefit, but they're going to pay it. <laughs> so if I was on water and sewer, I would have a concern. But I'm not on water or sewer, so. <laughs> I think we know someone that is that's going to have a concern. So <laughs> Because Tom's not here. This one. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be someone that's going to have a concern, and I think he just turned around from California. <laughs> He's so. heading back. I mean, I mean if, they, if they clarify that, and that's the attorney's opinion, that, that's fine. I just, If I could just say, it's, it's a pretty common practice with DPWs to do it that way. I don't think it's a problem. Yeah. Almost, uh, you know, they buy it, you know, for day-to-day -day use for the utility, and then public works for plowing. It, it's very common. Just have your pencil shot that night, that's all. Because <laughs> you know who's going to ask you the question. No, you didn't place it yet. <laughs> Make a motion to place That question was there, so that's why I specifically made sure to ask for it when I met with her. <laughs> I just heard him pull in. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to play. Ringing. You guys already did. Oh, you did? Yeah, that's oh, what I thought. All right. <laughs> all right, my mistake. <laughs> this oh, doesn't oh. have to go through CFPC? Yeah, but I. It has. Oh, it has. Okay. And, 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 and nipples eye. Okay. Just a point of clarification. Why does this, since it's a, a, a water and sewer user funded thing, why does it have to go through CIPC? Okay. They do capital improvement for the whole town. Yeah, yeah but, it's, it's, still but it's enterprise. It, yeah, but it's not their oh, purview, so isn't it? I think I'm agreeing with you that it's an enterprise. Right, so it's, it's really not their purview. But through the just, I don't think they have any say in it. I thought they looked at anything um, over five years. explain to me it was the cost. They have a cost threshold and a length, a longevity yeah. threshold that puts it under their purview. Yeah. Regardless of enterprise. And the thought process is if the enterprise were to go broke, the town would still be on the yep. hook through tax levy to cut, fill up, clean up the mess. Yep. So I, I don't think it's that far of a reach. Okay. All right. Article 26, to see if the town will vote to amend the town's zoning bylaw by deleting the text of Article 3, 8B, special permit, major home occupancy, and insert in place thereof a revised and reorganized 8 the home occupation bylaw and make related revisions to Article 1, Section 5 definitions, all as set forth in the handout entitled May 6, 2023 Annual Town Meeting Home Occupancy, Article Number 25, also on file with the town clerk or take any action in relation thereto. If I may, Dave George is on Zoom if anybody had any questions for him. Do not. Make a motion to place Article 26 as read. Appointment seconds. I was on planning board the other night, and I think they had some conversation about this, and I think they did a lot of work to clean it up and make it a little bit more straightforward and kind of less intimidating and less scary. Thank you. I actually watched that, too. I wasn't there, but I watched it. All right. Any other discussion? Roll call. Galvin, I. Appointment, I. And Nichols, I. Just saying, people can go back and watch these meetings. You really want to know what's going on. All right, Article 27, to see if the town will vote to amend the town's zoning by law, Article 7, Special Permit 42 and 44, by making minor technical corrections, all as set forth in the handout entitled May 6, 2023 Annual Town Meeting, Technical Corrections, Article Number 26, also on file with the town clerk or take any action in relation thereto. Make a motion to place Article 27 as read. 
Waitman, Waitman second. Any questions? Roll call? Yeah, but I. Waitman, I. And Nichols, I. And citizens petition. So we place this regardless to see if the town will vote to create an assistant town administrator position. The main duty of said position would be grant writing. Also, other duties as assigned by the town administrator or take any other action in relation thereto. So that's a citizen petition, so we have to place it anyway. And I think we need to take a vote on it, correct? You still have to vote to place it. You just have to have a choice not to place it. No, 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 to vote. You have to vote to place it. So even though I have to place Can it, you I have to vote yes? No, you, you only have, <laughs> you you only have, have to, to place it. You just have to vote to place right. it. Take a motion to place Article 28 as read. Appointment second. Roll call. Galvin aye. Appointment aye. And Nichols aye. It's just, it's just like an unfunded mandate. Well, it's going to be like a town administrator that we never funded. So. Well, it's like an unfunded mandate. You're stuck with it no matter what you want to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We have no other business, correct? So we'll see you all Tuesday. If I can get a motion. Can we get a motion to end tonight's meeting? <clears throat> see you Tuesday. Appointment second. Okay, roll call. Oh, yeah, Alvin, I. Oh, no. Appointment I. And Nichols out. <laughs> <laughs> Make a motion to close the finance committee meeting. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Done. Big joke.